Overcoming limits is an obsession for us Westerners. This obsession with surpassing limits is matched only by a mirror obsession. Fear of the ultimate limit, our own death, writ large as the death of civilization. In my new book, Limits, Why Malthus Was Wrong and Why Environmentalists Should Care, I argue that natural limits and limitless growth are two sides of the same coin. The specter of limits drives the pursuit of growth, and the pursuit of growth without limits is leading to planetary breakdown. Environmentalists, like myself, have been trapped within this logic. We perceive the planet as limited the moment we were shooting out of its limits. We think of Earth as bounded, an ungenerous mother that limits growth and limits our own desires. This thinking owes a lot to a little pamphlet published back in 1798, Thomas Robert Malthus's essay on population. Malthus is remembered today as a prophet of limits and doom, but Malthus, I show in my book, was as much an apostle of limitless growth. Assuming that unlimited population growth is God-given and desirable, Malthus concluded that we could never have enough food for everyone. The only response he saw was to grow more food. Like Malthus, economists today assume humans have unlimited wants and that this is good and natural. They don't use the word God-given anymore. Growth is then necessary to satisfy the unlimited wants economists themselves imagined and assumed in their models we have. In my book, I call for turning this circular logic on its head. We can and we have always limited our wants, I argue. Collective self-limitation has been the foundation of civilizations East and West, from Taoism and Buddhism to classical Greece. Want not, lack not. Only by limiting ourselves, the world becomes abundant, and we limit by sharing the commons in common. Fellow environmentalists have kept the question of limits alive, but we should own our choice of limits and stop attributing limits to a stingy nature. Unlike what Hollywood with its myth of the far west frontier wants us to think, there isn't always a happy end. Without the limit of death, there wouldn't be life. Limits are not a constraint of freedom. Limits are a condition for freedom. To play music, a pianist needs a limited keyboard. An infinite keyboard just paralyzes you. Now, more than ever, and in the face of planetary breakdown, we need what political philosophers have started calling limitarianism. Setting limits on how much resources and fossil fuels we extract, how much wealth and income one can concentrate, how much inequality we can accept. Learning to live simply so that others may simply live.